My name is Jonathan Yoon. I'm a neurosurgeon here at Mountside Medical Center. And uh, the purpose of this video today is to go through a very common procedure that we do in neurosurgery. Our hope is that, of course, nurses and the staff here at the hospital will be, become familiar with. It's the procedure involving the placement of a external ventricular drain and subsequently the care of a patient with an external ventricular drain. There are many steps, of course, uh, in the placement initially of this drain, but a lot of things that we have to keep an eye on for these critically ill patients. Um, so again, we'll be going through the steps of caring for these patients, uh, things to look out for. The folks who watch this video and un undergo subsequent training will be able to uh, properly maintain these drains and the steps involved uh, with maintenance of these drains. And uh, these, of course, start at receiving the patient with an external ventricular drain, subsequently setting up the drain, uh, properly zeroing the drain, uh, ensuring that all connections are properly maintained and sterile, um, how to zero the drain and how to uh, measure ICPs from the drain, uh, subsequently also measuring the output from the drain on an hourly basis, um, you know, of course, commenting on the appearance of the, the cerebral spinal fluid, Finally, the situations where a physician should be notified in the event of a malfunctioning drain or a neurologic deterioration of these patients. So an external ventricular drain, or otherwise known as an EVD, is a catheter that is placed by neurosurgeons either at the bedside in the intensive care unit or in the operating room uh, in situations where patients are unable to control the flow of their cerebral spinal fluid. This can happen in the setting of strokes, uh, tumors, bleeds, or any sort of blockage of the normal CSF uh, flow in the brain. Uh, this ultimately is very dangerous for patients um, as the CSF can build up quite quickly. Uh, subsequently, the pressures in the brain can build up quite quickly. Uh, so an EVD is placed in order to maintain uh, communication of CSF uh, out of the head uh, in order to manage the pressures and uh, keep patients neurologically safe. So when you receive a patient with an external ventricular drain, it'll commonly be directly from the operating room or during your change of shift. Uh, one of the most important things about caring for these patients, again, is to communicate with the nurses who had been taking care of this patient before and clarifying the orders that should be put into place. These orders include very specific parameters for head of bed positioning, how to level the drain, how to record how much fluid is coming out, what the ICPs have been as another vital sign, and second, most importantly, what the patient's neurological exam was. Uh, so upon receiving this patient, it's important to set up the drain correctly. The external ventricular drain, the principle is uh, the relative positioning of the head to the drain itself. Any alteration of the patient's position relative to the drain will alter fundamentally how much is actually coming out, which can be dangerous. So again, a very important principle is to never change the uh, position of the patient uh, without notifying the primary caretaker of the patient. When you receive the patient either from your prior shift or from the operating room, it's important to assess the continuity of the drain. This starts by following the drain catheter directly from the patient's head, uh, assessing the appearance of the dressing on the patient's head, seeing if there is any saturation, and then following the catheter distally, uh, ensuring that all stopcocks are open until it finally reaches the collection chamber here. So the second thing to ensure is that the drain is properly leveled to, to the patient. Uh, when we say to level the drain, this basically means that the zero point on the drain should match with the patient's tragus on his ear. This can be done in a number of ways. In many instances, there will be a laser leveler uh, available to the nurses. Alternatively, you can take the catheter, bring it to the patient's ear, and ensure that it's at zero at a right angle. Uh, of course, this is done through uh, the centimeters of water measurement rather than any other measurement. So that's another important thing to consider. A few pieces of important information that we can get from the drain. Uh, the first piece of information that we need is the hourly output of the drain, how much cerebral spinal fluid is actually being produced by the patient. The output of the drain will be collected into this collection chamber called the burotrol, and the amount that's collected can be read from the measurements on the burotrol itself. Every hour, this should be emptied into the collection reservoir here, and the 
subsequent collection should start uh, with nothing left in this chamber. The second piece of information that's important to get from the external ventricular drain is the intracranial pressure. It's important to remember that it's impossible to both drain fluid and measure the intracranial pressure at the same time. The second important piece of information that we get from these drains is the patient's intracranial pressure or ICP. The ICP is measured through a pressure transducer that many are familiar with that are used in arterial lines that is connected directly to the drain. As you can observe, this pressure transducer is again level at zero, again relative to the patient's tragus. The pressure transducer at the start of every shift should be zero to atmosphere. In order to zero to atmosphere, similar to an arterial line, the pressure transducer stopcock should be turned off to the drain, communicating with the patient. The cap should be open to atmosphere, and the zero function should be engaged on the patient's monitor. After that's done, once the pressure transducer is now communicating with the, the patient's drain, you will be able to see a waveform and a number, in this case, uh, ICP of 17, that corresponds with the patient's intracranial pressure. It's important to remember that when you are measuring pressure, uh, you are not draining cerebral spinal fluid. So this is not a setting that you should keep uh, continuously running. Uh, at, for the most part, the patient should be draining into the collection system unless otherwise directed by the physician. So important pieces of information that should be entered into the patient's record include their hourly neurologic assessments, the output of the drain every hour, the appearance of the cerebral spinal fluid that comes out every hour. This can range from clear, pink tinged, bloody, or yellow. It's also important to measure and record the intracranial pressure every hour. So there are certain situations where the patient's external ventricular drain and transducer should be re-zeroed. These situations include at the start of every shift, whenever the patient leaves the room to go get a study or a procedure performed, or if there's a technician that enters the room to perform a study on them, or really in any situation where you feel that the intracranial pressure reading is inaccurate. Another piece of information that's important to record into the patient's chart is the appearance of their cerebral spinal fluid. The appearance of the spinal fluid can range from clear, colorless, uh, to pink or bloody. Sometimes it can also be yellow or purulent. A common situation that may occur that requires your immediate attention is the setting in which an abnormal measurement of the intracranial pressure is being read. This can include either a pressure reading of zero, even though you have the transducer properly set to the reading position, or a sustained pressure that is uh, too high. The definition of an intracranial pressure that is too high will be determined by an order placed by the physician. But typically, it's, it's a drain reading above 20 centimeters of water for about 20 minutes or more. The normal range of intracranial pressures can typically range from low single digits to upwards of 20 centimeters of water. When you do encounter an abnormal reading from the transducer, the first steps are to check the drain itself, ensuring that all stopcocks are open to the uh, transducer itself. Secondarily, it's important to re-level and re-zero the drain ensuring that the zero is matched with the patient's tragus and to undergo the zeroing procedure of the drain transducer itself. And if all these maneuvers are done and performed correctly and if the intracranial pressure is still reading an abnormal value, at this point, this is where you would notify the physician of this finding. So there will be an order that clarifies the situations where you should notify a physician. These include low or extremely high output from the drain, that differs from any prior value. ICPs that are sustained and elevated above 20 centimeters of water, typically for greater than 20 minutes. A drain that is either disconnected or non-functioning. Or a change in the quality of the cerebral spinal fluid, say for instance if it goes from clear to bloody. A new fever in a patient, or any neurologic change that you encounter with the patient. So thank you for watching and following along with this video. Uh, hopefully you're a little bit more familiar with how to care for these patients with external ventricular drains. Uh, if there is one take home point from this video, it should be that in any situation where you have any trouble or any questions, you really should uh, reach out to a resident or a physician or a nurse that is more experienced uh, in order to help you with uh, how to care for these patients.